Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. Today we continue our Adventure Spotlight series with a look at another 4 star. This time around, Verica. She's one of the most potent healers in the game, both for newer players and veterans alike. So let's find out what makes her so great. Verica is a 4 star flame element staff user. Like all other staff users, that means Verica has a recovery potency co-ability and, as of now, only staves have been granted the healer class. As a weapon type, staves fire off ranged attacks which are pretty slow and clunky to be honest. Their force strike is more capable, especially at diminishing the overdrive gauge, but these units aren't designed to be attackers, and it shows. Luckily for Verica, her healing is more than robust enough to make up for her low damage. Healing scales off of the user's HP and strength, but much more so off of HP. And Verica's stats skew toward HP, bolstering her healing. She's among the top 3 as far as HP goes within the flame pool, although her ranking is a bit lower in general. She's well worth a promotion should you wish to reach her max stats, but only if you wish to use her for end game content. Otherwise, her HP as a 4 star is strong enough to provide some hefty healing in a variety of scenarios, but it's Verica's abilities and skills that really make this the case. Verica's first ability is full HP equals healing, up to 15% once upgraded. This is terrific if your Verica is set as your helper, and not as hard to maintain as you might think with how effective Verica's healing over time can be. As a ranged unit, it isn't too hard for her to avoid the fray and maintain full HP while casting her first skill to top off the entire team's health. Her second ability is Stun Res, up to 100%, which makes Verica the go-to healer for one of the current endgame maps, High Midgard Stormer. I would even wager that Verica is used in over 99% of High Midgard Stormer clears. Outside of the endgame though, Verica's Stun Res still comes in handy. Since both Wind and Flame Foes can inflict stun, Verica has a wider range of uses than healers with most other resistance types. She's excellent on Flame Imperial Onslaught for instance, and she can help your water team auto battle it. Verica's final ability, obtainable only after she's been promoted to a 5 star, provides her with 8% more recovery potency. This is a luxury for most quests, but helpful to have against High Midgard Swarmer. So all of Verica's abilities are, at a minimum, good. None of them are wasted slots or hard to make work. But where Verica stands out most as a healer are her skills. She has two healing skills and both are among the best in the game. Verica's first skill, Blessings of Destiny, heals immediately, cures stun once upgraded, then grants a health regen buff over time. While it does take three full staff combos to charge, this move does so much. The regen over time is especially noteworthy. This makes Verica a great helper and, as a unit, allows her team some room to breathe against future mishaps. One and done heals do little if the teammate healed immediately eats another hit, but Verica helps hedge against that problem greatly. The one note on timing I should add is about stun recovery. When adventurers get stunned, they fall down. Only upon standing up do they actually receive the stun status. So if you want this skill to cure stun, you'll need to wait to use it until that point. It can be slightly tricky to time when the stakes are high, but practice helps. Verica's second skill, Time's Respite, provides a massive heal to the teammate most in need. This can only save one team member, but it's incredible in a pinch thanks to the high base recovery potency. Since Verica's first skill generally grants enough passive healing to keep most teammates near full, this move is perfect as a panic button in case things go bad. It can get an ally out of a jam immediately. More generally though, it's just nice to see any two healing skills on Verica. That alone is fairly uncommon. Now when it comes to builds, I think Verica is pretty straightforward. With her emphasis on pure healing, any type of healing worm print will be great on her for normal types of quests or as a helper. Luisa's Hobbies is a good budget pick, but I've listed Glorious Tempest here since that's what you'll want when facing High Midgard Swarmer. Phoenix is the best dragon to use with Verica since it provides her a massive HP boost and Phoenix herself has an outstanding healing skill. 
The 4-star Flamestaff Arc Voyager provides a skill similar to Verica's second one, except with slightly lower recovery potency and a longer charge time. Despite that, it's a third healing skill, generally what you'll want in most scenarios. There is an alternative for those who want to defy Verica's kits and go for overwhelming damage anyway. This next build is definitely closer to whale territory, but I've seen it work enough times that I wanted to acknowledge its effectiveness. It's possible to build a DPS Verica to take on high Midgard Sormer. I don't suggest this unless you wish to flex on the old dragon, but Verica can crack 2000 strength with a setup like this. You're going to want a max unbound Cerberus or Agni, but it's a delight to behold when it works. Let me reiterate though that for most people, the vast majority, you'll just want to build Verica like your typical healer. HP Dragon and Healing Wormprint Verica can work with a variety of teams, but some of my favorite adventurers to pair with her are Elaine and Cerise. The HP co-ability of Elaine boosts Verica's healing, and since he only has 75% stun res, he appreciates her clearing that affliction. Cerise, meanwhile, has a move which deals more damage for every buff she has, and the HP regen buff granted by Verica's first skill counts toward this. For longer matches, Cerise's skill haste can also allow Verica to get off some of her skills a full combo sooner. As far as competition, Verica doesn't have much to worry about. Orion is the only other flame healer in the game. His kit isn't horrible, but it's split between damage and healing, and he can't hold a candle to Verica when it comes to the latter. I also list Hildegard as a competitor for Verica, since she can be brought to a variety of maps thanks to her light element. In my estimation, Hildegard and Verica are roughly equal in power. Verica is much more accessible for the current endgame of High Midgard Swarmer, however, and that's exactly where I want to show off my gameplay of her. This was my third ever clear with my Verica, who's running the build I showed earlier. Verica is still a 4 star, since I mainly use Mikoto for High Midgard Swarmer these days, but thanks to my Max Unbound staff and Phoenix, I'm able to make this setup work. It certainly helps that Cerise and Vanessa are around to buff defense too. For most players, if Verica is your entry point to High Midgard Swarmer, I would definitely recommend you promote her to a 5 star. Since she works so well with a 4 star weapon and dragon, plus she's a natural 4 star herself, she is probably the easiest entry point into this endgame challenge for most people. The two hardest parts of this fight for Verica are the beginning and the end. Whenever High Midgard Sormer uses his 1-2 combo of Tattered Sky and Storm Chaser, it's important that the whole team have enough HP to survive. Cerise took a spitball early this match, but actually avoided stacking with the group during the Tattered Sky to preserve her HP. This unusual move proved critical for her surviving during the Storm Chaser, since only one of us could receive Verica's targeted heal. Vanessa's defense co-ability also made this section quite a bit easier. With my 4-star Verica lacking her level 3 Blessings of Destiny, and not having a third ability, the margin for error is small. Thankfully, my teammates did an awesome job at dodging from that point forward. I monitored their HP and seldom had to use my skills to heal anyone outside the very start of the match. Instead, I hung on to them for most of the match in case anything went wrong. Keeping track of everyone's HP is something you may have to get used to if you aren't used to playing a healer. I know there are lots of little adjustments I could probably make when reviewing this footage. Planting myself more often and ensuring the last hit of my combo lands for more SP gain is a big one that stands out to me. Eventually we get the break, unfortunately after golems had already spawned. I could have probably been a bit more aggressive with 4 strikes to cancel this spawn entirely, since if High Midgard Swarmer is broken when the summon text is on top of the screen, that phase can be skipped. I wanted to ensure I had access to all of my skills before getting more liberal with my 4 strike use. In the end though, I was able to hang on to those skills for nearly the entire rest of the match. After the break, the team follows the motions of the battle. We crawl up the wall to avoid the first Gale Blast, and slowly whittle down High Midgard Swarmer's health. We group up to tank the second Tattered Sky, and split for the Storm Chaser, which, thankfully, we had skills and dragons ready to survive. Because we broke High Midgard Swarmer after that, we actually cancelled out the third Tattered Sky and second Gale Blast. 
That tends to be the other big critical juncture for Verica, since she usually takes the Tattered Sky by herself while activating Phoenix's skill to iframe the incoming big tornadoes. And as the battle comes to a close, let's take a look at the first chapter of Verica's adventure story while I provide my closing thoughts. Verica is an exceptional healer, both due to her base kit and the circumstances surrounding it. Just having two healing skills is good enough to make weaker 3-star healers work just fine. But Verica can cure stun, grant a regen buff, and she has stun res, which just so happens to be perfect for one of the hardest challenges in the game. When you add in the fact that Phoenix is one of the best pure HP dragons around, Verica starts to look even better than she already is. Whether it's early content and the campaign, the Imperial Onslaught grind, or High Midgard Swarmer, Verica is pretty much unmatched as a flame healer. She ranks up there with Hildegard as one of the best healers in the game, full stop. If you are interested in challenging High Midgard Swarmer and already have a Verica, she will probably be your quickest and most convenient route to do so. Unlike Yudin and Vanessa, a 4-star elemental weapon tends to be her preferred choice, although the 5-star works too, but this means you won't need precious twinkling sand for her to be viable. A Phoenix with 1 or 2 unbinds can get the job done for a promoted Verica, which isn't too bad compared to the preferred dragons for damage dealers. Although there is a learning curve to playing her, she's just about a requirement on any team. Only Loen, Hildegard, and Orion can fill that spot, and only with very particular and costly builds. Some would argue that Verica is easier to pilot than melee characters against HMS, but I'll abstain from judgment on that issue and leave it to the more seasoned players. At the least, there are a few clutch moments Verica needs to execute well and experts at Verica can do some pretty incredible things. I'll end the video with a look at some screenshots from some of the more veteran Verica players on this channel's Discord server. They were able to take down High Midgard using a team of 3 DPS Verica and 1 Vanessa, and another run featured a true 3-person clear. It's pretty remarkable to see. But that's all I have to say about Verica, and that's going to do it for this video. What do you think of Verica? Have you managed to summon her yet? Have you built her up? Any gameplay advice for others trying to use her? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. With that, thank you as always for watching, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.